Well, it may not be mega Marino so far, but you can't throw a ball any better than oh. that. Under pressure, falling away, and just rainbowing a perfect toss to Jackson wide open. And it rains harder, and the fans cheer louder for Miami. Watching NFL playoff action here on Screen Sport, where the Miami Dolphins now hold a healthy 14 point lead over the San Diego Chargers. 146 left in the half. Only two plays to score after the interception by Vincent. The enemy. Great open field tackle by Kerry Glenn. Emotion turns on a lot of things. We're going to go back to the interception. Here's the antenna receiver, Nate Lewis. He runs across. You're going to see that Lewis is absolutely wide open. This should be an easy completion for Humphreys with just this being his 21st NFL start nerves. He does not read the receiver correctly, underthrows him. Vincent makes the interception, and Marino and company do the rest. Oklahoma Academic All-America Keith Jackson with a touchdown. 139 left in the half, and in this rain, Humphreys goes to work down by two scores. Boy, what coverage. Finally, it's Harmon. A great open field runner, Harmon, but on this turf, tough to wiggle free. And down he goes at the 24. Stephen Braggs, an extra defensive back, makes the stop. And San Diego will spend a timeout. And congratulations to Buffalo. And today to the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy Johnson's young team that just is maturing with each week and advances with a convincing win against the Eagles at home. Humphreys goes deep. Nate Lewis, it's Vincent, and he almost had his third. Vincent, who had two all season, almost gets three and a half, and uh, Humphreys took quite a hit from Jeff Cross. Uh, watch the pass rush. Actually, it's a combination, 91 and 51. It's Cox and Cross that, that do nail him. He's got that left shoulder taped. Mm. Boy, he's got the guts, though, you know. He, he really he tried to get to his front foot the ball to uh, fire that thing. You see a lot of quarterbacks who kind of throw it on their back foot. Tough kid that Stan Humphreys. He knew it was coming. Bob Galliano, who started the season as the opening day quarterback for San Diego. Third and four. This is a big player. Miami's going to get the ball with a chance to score more. Humphreys scrambling for the first down at the 34-yard line. And 102 left in the half. As you look at the veteran Galliano and time called by San Diego. Dick, I can now see a, a, the weakness in the San Diego offense as Humphrey goes to the sideline for counsel. Uh, they just don't have the full wide receiver running back two minute offense. Uh, anytime you show a weakness where the thing that Miami's done best here is they put eight guys at the line of scrimmage and told San Diego now run on us. San Diego has not been able to figure out a way to throw the ball consistently over that eight man front. And so San Diego's got to fix that at halftime. And here in the final two minutes or the final minute, they got them all bunched up and trying to cubby up quail the Miami defense here. And there's no way we can underestimate the impact of the weather on the game as yes. well. I mean, two, inter two turnovers have led to the Miami touchdowns. Neither team really has been impressive moving the ball on its own. Interesting too that you've got a rookie Troy Vincent who seems to be matched up a lot with Anthony Miller very much involved in covering their best receiver one timeout left for San Diego one minute to go Humphreys intercepted Brian Cox oh the rookies are really showing their stuff for Miami in this first half Cox 
in his second year, making it to the Pro Bowl, a vicious hitter. He's had one interception all year, 14 sacks, and look at him play that as if he knew where it was going. Tended for Sean Jefferson. Humphreys never saw it. Inexperience shows in a lot of ways. Now, Humphreys has played in the league for five years. This being his 21st start, it's just a lack of looking at a lot of different kind of defenses that got him there. Miami with all three timeouts, and they're back in San Diego territory at three interceptions, all in the San Diego half of the field. Marino sidestepping and making a big throw to keep Jackson. Stanley Richard, the tackler, will allow progress to the 38. Uh, you mentioned the rookies have uh, certainly had an impact. He's been, had more of an impact as a sacker. They don't like him to drop in coverage. Zone read well. And Humphreys never saw him. It's hard to miss a guy who was 6'4", 250, but Humphreys never saw him. Oh, Marino and Miami will use a timeout with 45 seconds left in this first half. Interceptions leading to the 14-0 lead. And a score here, if this weather continues, will make it most difficult for San Diego to uh, engineer a rally in the second half. A team that has won eight in a row, the Chargers, and 12 of their last 13. I don't want to root particularly for either team here, but this has certainly been the playoffs of comebacks. You can't rule out that anything can happen in this 1992 postseason. Thus far, Miami on this slick turf and with a ball that is very difficult to handle has uh, been error free. Second and five. Humphrey. He has the first down just outside the 30. And remember, Miami has one of the outstanding place kickers in the NFL in Pete Stojanovic. In fact, Stojanovic now has kicked 100 field goals, which qualifies him on the all-time ranking list. And he moved immediately ahead of Nick Lowry of Kansas City into the number one spot. He's over 80% accuracy. Yeah, and 17 points, leading by 14 here, 17 points at home in playoffs with rain. That's got to feel like 30 to San Diego. One timeout left for each team, 39 seconds to go, but uh, Marino isn't thinking Stojanovic in three. You know that. His father still delivers newspapers, drives a truck in Pittsburgh, refuses any financial help from his son. And on strike, he yeah. hasn't been working, has he? Likes his company. Likes his company. You know, they, they, they'll play golf together, come down here in Florida, but leave me alone. I can I can bend myself. I'm all right. We talked about the toughness of Humphreys. Don't ignore Marino in that regard. He did. He's no custard quarterback. On a dry field Friday, that ball is caught. You, you saw the look of Dan Marino. He gives you these pained expressions. One of the most emotional quarterbacks I think I've ever seen in a huddle, on a sideline, between plays when it works and when it doesn't work. He's an emotional guy. I think in Artiz, he knows how many chances a quarterback gets and feels like this is his best opportunity and he's got to make the best of it in his quest for the Super Bowl victory. And second and ten. Roger defense looked confused. And there's Jackson. Touchdown. Oh my.
disaster for San Diego. Here's Jackson. Now, as this, as this tape rolls, watch the confusion on the part of San Diego. Dick, I think you called it perfectly. See, they're trying to communicate from the inside out. People pointing all over the place, trying to communi communicate who's doing what. And Jackson just goes straight down the field. Total drop coverage by formation and also by personnel. You can see Stanley Richard, the free safety. He's making the calls. Good time for Marino to look around. Not a particular pretty pass, but Jackson does make the reception. His second of the half. So here in this second quarter, the interceptions at the 48, the 37, and the 42-yard line, all in San Diego territory. And Bobby Ross has seen Miami convert all three into touchdowns. Welcome back to Screen Sport. You're watching NFL playoff action between the San Diego Chargers and the Miami Dolphins from Joe Robbie Stadium. And it's been all Miami in the first half. They lead it 21-0. And in the third quarter, the Dolphins extended their lead on this Pete Stojanovic field goal. Stojanovic rarely misses. He didn't miss on this occasion. And this kick made it 24-0 in favor of the rampant Dolphins. So we jump to the fourth quarter. There's 12.31 remaining. Miami still leading 24-0, and they have a first down. Let's get back to the action. The Miami Dolphins. Twelve and a half minutes away from their seventh AFC championship. They're five and one. No one's been to more Super Bowls than Don Shula. He's two and four. And Buffalo apparently will be the challenge a week from Sunday here at Joe Robbie. Junior Seau with another tackle. Dan Marino with three touchdown passes, and that means in playoff action, a touchdown pass in nine consecutive games. Only the snake with a longer string. Uh, numbers are nice, records are nice. What's he doing playing it here? 24 0, 12 02 to go. What can be accomplished by Dan Marino playing out the rest of this football game? Are you questioning Don Shula? No. Gary Stevens. <laughs> Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator. Okay. No, not Don. Uh, you're, you're, Gary Stevens right there. That's, in the half that's smart. Humphrey. Showing his speed outside. And showing his speed laterally again, Junior Seau. He was running right with Humphrey. There's Gary Stevens. Uh, Stevens has a... A rare relationship with uh, Don Shula. He can speak his mind. He, he can stand up to Don Shula. You don't do it often. You don't do it frequently. But you, know, you, you, you speak your mind. He's the play caller. Of course, his offense has been on Don Shula's book for a long time. But you know, I got to get Scott Mitchell up, warming up, and get Shula out of. I mean, uh, get the Marino out of there. And in this small world of uh, football, Stevens, of course, also with a strong connection to Jimmy Johnson, who is his. Uh, Assistant here at the University of Miami yeah. before Johnson moved on. And when he moved point. on, uh, yep. Don Shula took Stevens on his staff. Third and four. Just under 11 minutes to go, and Humphrey close to a first down. Leslie O'Neill making the stop. And again, in case you're just joining us, 24 0 Miami, and the San Diego Charger defense with 51 sacks on the year has not been able to sack Marino. You just saw the two big offensive stars, I think, of San Diego's offense this year. Butts on the left, basically removed from the game plan in the first quarter. And Anthony Miller, little or no effect on this offense today. And I think Stan Humphreys was playing under a lot more pain than he'll ever admit. But last week, for a quarterback to go out there, known as, generally speaking, the position faint of heart, Hold admiration for Stan Humphreys. Craver. Boy, it's Aaron Craver who's been on the injured list, activated this week. 
You can tell the fresh legs the way he's carried the ball. Out 10 weeks with a hamstring pull. And if Mark Higgs doesn't hurt his knee and undergo surgery, Aaron Craver does not see the active roster for the playoffs. He's big. It started out this season as the spot that Bobby Humphrey was in. He was going to be the receiver out of the backfield. And he got hurt. Humphrey emerged, and Craver's seen most of this season from the sideline. Nine yards all season, 27 today. Submarining on the tackle with rolling. Well, Buffalo and Miami, they each one and they each one on the road. Buffalo really uh, nailed by the Dolphins, 37-10 at Rich Stadium. That was a shocker, and that was uh, just after Keith Jackson had been signed, and Humphrey also playing a role. And then Buffalo uh, made amends down here at Joe Robbie, 26-20 late in the year. You know, there was another interesting thing in that. Miami went up in Buffalo. Bobby Humphrey, remember, missed the plane. He had a real incentive to play well that week, and he did. There's Claver. Oh, touchdown! Oh, my! years his second touchdown 25 yards for the touchdown, but... Yeah, in tennis, they say you love a lover. In basketball, they say press a pressing team, and in football, they say be physical with a physical team. Banks on the block, Craver runs over him, another score. And these fans in Florida can't get enough. 31-0. Nate Lewis, another chance. So the 20. Tripped up by Bernie Parmalee. Dick, you know, you mentioned these fans can't get enough. Miami Hurricanes got beat in the Sugar Bowl. Everybody's now jumped on the Miami Dolphins bandwagon, and they're their team for championships this year. Injured charger on the play. It appears to be Ronnie Harmon. Well, one of the reasons Miami, with his big lead, seemingly still not satisfied... Remember, coming into this game, the Marino-led offense scored five touchdowns in the last five games and gave up four. They were only a plus one. Yep. They've got five today. Uh, if you're uh, Buffalo, oh, thank you, Marino's out. If you're Buffalo, they're going to say, what did Miami do? I mean, they get three turnovers and score. They had uh, no more than uh, 50 yards to get in the end zone. Hey, Buffalo's got to feel good. Next Sunday, Buffalo against Miami here on NBC. While we have a moment, I want to send along the best to uh, the family and friends of uh, a good guy, Bill Granholm, who passed away earlier this week, age 70. We knew him back with the Rams in the Dan Reeves era. He was with the Chicago Rockets and the Rams and then went to the NFL office in 67, a confidant of former commissioner Pete Rozelle and uh, was responsible for those player USO tours, amongst many other things. Bill Granholm, they called him Granny, even when he was young. He'll be missed. Humphreys. 
to his tight end Derek Walker the first pass caught by a Charger tight end today Walker had 34 on the season not as if they haven't been on the field all day long either uh, have heard from Buffalo they are not coming south to prepare for next week's game they're staying in Buffalo they don't like rain uh, they, they've got a dome up there they feel very comfortable in 20 below Dick. Walker again and the former Wolverine gets to the 41 yard line where Stephen Braggs wrestles him out of bounds. That rocket head we're looking at there. Steve Hendrickson. Rocket head has not had a good day. Had a hit the home run last week after the final touchdown against Kansas City. Well, it's been a very impressive day for the winners, the Cowboys earlier, and now the Miami Dolphins. Boy, the final four. What games next week? Dallas, San Francisco, Buffalo, Miami. All four teams have played games against each other with a great legacy. Harmon using his block as well. He's terrific in the open field and picks up the first down to the 41 of Miami. A rare trip into Miami territory. In fact, to the 41, uh, slingshot Schneiderman checking. That might be their deepest penetration since early in the game. Too tall. Lewis Oliver. And Oliver prances out of bounds at the 30. He's on his way to Lake Okeechobee. And Buffalo remembers him in that game one. Oliver had three interceptions and one of them for, what, 103 yards for a touchdown. He's ever had an easier one. I mean, I've heard of playing center field, but he was barely moving to catch that interception. He's a manager, an investor in a vocal group. Three talented women called Three Times Love. I think that's part of their routine. <laughs> I thought he learned that from you. <laughs> James Saxon, the former chief, picked up as a plan B. Takes the handoff from quarterback Scott Mitchell. Now, we talked about Humphreys, and you saw an NFL Live to start the day. Now, Bobby Beathard gave up a number three to get Humphreys. Now, it would take a number one today to get him. He's part of the future. He had a great run, won eight in a row, 12 out of 13. He showed his toughness, showed his leadership. He's got a great arm. He just was... Not to have his day here in Miami. And, you know, unfortunately now for San Diego, they have to deal with the reality of this season. And the reality of this season is next year you play the division winner's schedule. This year, the last place. this year they were 4-12, and 12, played that schedule. It's not going to be quite as easy. Jackson again met by Seau. And uh, with help from his friends, Bert Grossman. Now the, uh, this was not just your ordinary year for San Diego. 133 teams have started 0-4 in NFL history. 133. None of the 133 prior to San Diego had a winning record and much less make it to the playoffs. So it was an extraordinary season that uh, this young guy, Humphreys, engineered. more for Craver and this is the time where San Diego's sidelines must wish it just him. I've long been a proponent of excuse me a phrase used in golf the rest of this is good so nobody gets injured the last five minutes we shake hands gentlemen great season the rest of it's good and I the first question I want to ask it before this game is over. The discussion this week is going to be who is Buffalo starting quarterback. Now Mark Levy's already said when Jim Kelly gets back and healthy he is our number one quarterback. So then when I heard him say that I'm sure somebody has gone to the doctor 
and said we want 100 percent recovered Look in your me. in your in your diagnosis in your prognosis for Jim Kelly before you Boy, tell I me mean, he's fine the last six uh, quarters by Frank Reich remarkable I mean uh, he's earned the chance to continue Bobby Ross he looks like a eight round fighter doesn't he I mean, he's, that knows he's a toughness tough for him to sit there and take it we asked him if he ever did box he said no but he does remember a fullback at William and Mary that ran over him and created the nose you now see None other uh, than Boom Boom Lenny Rubel. Lenny Boom Boom Rubel. He said, you never forget the bottom of that cleat. Coming <laughs> right toward your, toward your face. Rearrange your profile. Uh, and, of course, uh, I think if you ask uh, Bobby Ross, who Buffalo should start a quarterback next week, he'd say Frank Wright, his quarterback while at Maryland, along with Boomer Esiason. He's a no-nonsense man, Boss Ross, and yet he's really a, a player's coach. They, uh, they liked him even when they were 0-4. I mean, they, they were talking the high praise of this new head coach uh, when they were losing. Yeah, he pushed a lot of good buttons. He came in, realized he had a young quarterback in John Freeze, uh, accepted Dan Henning's offense, the previous coach and offensive coaching staff, accepted his offense because he didn't want the quarterbacks to learn a new offense. All his assistants had to learn that offense. Harmony, a uh, rare carry, and Steve Hendrickson pushed him out of bounds to force the punting team on, and he had the feeling that Ross might send out uh, Galliano to be the quarterback. But for Miami and Marino. Well, we, you know, we were looking for a mega day out of Dan Marino. He didn't have to do much, but the one compliment you've got to pay him when given the opportunity on those turnovers, he made good on every one of them. He was 17 for 29, three touchdown passes, no interceptions, no sacks. Lewis with a fair catch at the 15. There's just a bit more than three minutes to go. NFL American football here on Screen Sport. The Miami Dolphins lead the San Diego Chargers 31-0, and they're on their way to the AFC Championship game. Let's get back to Dick Enberg for the last rights. Stan Humphrey still at quarterback. First down at the Charger 15. 31-0, Miami. Underneath, Walker. As the Dolphins giving the short shot, 12 yards on that play. Cliff Odom, the veteran from Texas Arlington, makes the tackle. Well, the Miami Dolphins certainly made good use of the two weeks off. They got some people well. They looked uh, very long and hard at a at a prolific offense and defensively shut it down. Ronnie Harmon and Odom was there again. Played met much of his uh, career with the Colts, where he led them in tackles. It was number two five different times. And for Don Shula. Who moves ever closer to Hallis's all-time record? This will be number 318, his 18th playoff win. And Anthony Miller still with a goose egg. That's a Pro Bowl receiver. Uh, he, uh, among other things, Mr. Shula can be an inspiration to his present-day players. You see that left hand? That's the 17-0 uh, ring. That's the 72 ring with the 18 little diamonds surrounding the big diamond in the center. Brings it out just to get attention, you know? And if you want to get his attention, you ask him, gee, Don, uh, who was the best team in NFL history? Well, let's say the Steelers or let's say, and he said, how can you be better than 17 and 0 if you want to really get him going? Fumbled by Jefferson, and Miami has the ball again. I can't imagine who might have come up with that fumble or knocked it loose. I think Hollier makes the hit. Yeah, he does. No, it's 36. It's Stephen Braggs. And Lewis Oliver celebrates anything on that defense. Five turnovers, Miami. None for San Diego. Bernie Parmalee, the only rookie on the Miami offense, a free agent from Ball State, gets a rare carry as we're at the two-minute timeout. 
There's Marino, a man who uh, they haven't always hugged. <laughs> in 84, in his second year, took his team, Miami team, to the Super Bowl, lost to San Francisco. Then in 85, in the playoffs, they were upset by New England. The Patriots as the wild card, winning all the way to the Super Bowl, where Mike Ditka's Bears beat him. Carmely tackled by Seau. Did you say Mike Ditka's Bears beat him in the Super Bowl? You're being very kind. You are being very kind. 46 to 10 in a game that for many of us working at, we wondered if it would ever end. Ooh, good. It had its moments. One of them was not Walter Payton scoring a touchdown, however, his last game. Uh, Shula has said, as you look at Mitchell, his backup on the field, that one of the things he's always tried to do with Dan Marino is surround him with as good an athlete as he possibly could, bringing in Jackson, acquiring Humphrey. Uh, he's still trying to upgrade this team around Marino. He has that much faith in Dan Marino's ability as a quarterback. Parmalee fumbles, and San Diego recovers. Uh, Bernie Parmalee, and that's the first mistake by Miami today, and it comes with just a minute, 11 seconds left. Too little, too late for Bobby Ross. Appeared to be Stanley Richard around the ball for the Chargers. Marino... Uh, uh, he, he's got the, the swagger of a star, but there's a, a nice comfort about Marino. He's as a man, he's, uh, he's he's not your ordinary cut of quarterback, is he? No, he's not. Uh, father of four, uh, likes to stay close to home, very close to his family of Pittsburgh. He loves the company of the other quarterbacks in the NFL. He's great friends with Kelly, the Siason. Uh, Billy Joe Tolliver, that group, Jim McMahon, loves being around Jim McMahon, just listening to Mac talk. He got that Pittsburgh accent, you know, when you talk to him like that, <laughs> talk like a tough guy. He loves his game of football, too. And the one quality he's acquired from Shula, you can interview him for an hour and not get one good <laughs> note. He won't tell you anything. Shula has taught him well, and he says a lot of nice sure. He's the He's a pregame on NBC here, a half-hour show before every game. <laughs> You'd think that he'd give us a nibble, some little nugget, something. Boy, is he good at long sentences with no meat in it. <laughs> Humphreys to Miller, who finally gets a catch and pays the price. Stephen Braggs with a tackle. Speaking of uh, continual I thought about the competitive nature, I thought it was strange that when we were, uh, we did a game up in Buffalo with uh, with Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins, and he was talking about his restaurant. He said, you see where we're ranked? You see where we're ranked? <laughs> Who wants to move up? He wants to be the number one ranked steakhouse. Yeah, one of those ratings had him right there in the top ten. Miller again. You saw on that, just before the play, Shula shaking hands and a very quick glimpse of Joe Green. There's Green, the Hall of Famer, on the sidelines. And you talk about defense. Joe Green in the steel curtain, and uh, Green part of this shutout today. 30 seconds to go. Now, what I tell you, the car coming over when he played with Pittsburgh, we just didn't run at him. We just okay, Joe, that's your spot. Do whatever you want. We're going someplace else. One of the gentlemen off the field. Was he really that mean on the field? Uh, they didn't come close to describing this. <laughs> on the field. You can't put into words. The way I don't want to incriminate him. Oh, he was tough. Huh? Oh, he was. The, the sounds that came out of that man just before the snap, you had to get used to. <laughs> you really did. Tom Olivadotti staying close to the coach. When your team uh, shuts out the opposition, that's the time to be close to uh, the headmaster. Job well done. San Diego's worst defeat since early in the 88 season when they lost to Denver 34 to 3. Goodness. 23 seconds to go. Second and 10. Thanks to all the help in the booth. Steady partner Rush Schneiderman, Harry Von Suckskull, and Terry Brumfield. Executive producer. Terry O'Neill with us, John Ferratzis, the coordinating producer, John Gonzalez, our director. Well, Blaze winner in a Blaze. A uh, lot to sort out, but most of it very positive for that veteran. Just uh, kind of a cruel ending for the Chargers. hands on a pick intended for Anthony Miller Humphreys 
Overthrowing again. It just uh, been an absolutely awful day for Stan Humphreys. Well, they were so confident too yesterday when we talked to them. Felt comfortable, thought they could do anything they wanted. Um, just not worked in any way, shape, or form. Let's see now. Buffalo is next. Um, <laughs> that wasn't kind, was it? That was. Sorry about that, Dan. Yeah, we apologize, Danny. We're going to hear about that next week. Humphrey's 43rd pass attempt. And he throws it right out of his own hand and picks it up and runs it out of bounds. Well, that pretty well symbolizes uh, the ugliness of the late afternoon for Stan Humphreys. Ruled an incomplete pass. So he's 18 for 43. Steve Young said, I wish they'd have called that yes. that way yesterday in San Francisco. I, I think the uh, officials were showed a great deal of mercy there in saying that was an incomplete pass. Yeah, let's not add to the embarrassment here. Ten seconds, fourth and ten. But it was an awful good run for San Diego this year. It was. They've, uh, they're back in love with the NFL in San Diego. Humphreys incomplete. Miami takes over with three seconds to go. next year but you can bet this will be coaching fodder sometime for Ross to remind his team of how they felt today and remember too that last year one of four San Diego wins was against Miami in San Diego good effort he said read his lips nice effort Rand Papa Don Shula birthday was last Monday 63 son of a commercial fisherman in Cleveland where he said I'd bone and pack fish out of Lake Erie for six cents a pound. He's been boning and picking the opposition since Don Shula's 318th win Miami again in the AFC championship Buffalo in town a week from today. In the big game for the big quarterbacks, and Dan Marino was there to deliver. And this crowd believes they were a factor, and they'll be ready for Buffalo Sunday next. O.J. Simpson down on the field. Coach, congratulations on the day's game. Your thoughts about playing Buffalo for the third time next year? Well, we got to get it done, and uh, Buffalo's uh, a heck of a football team. That come from behind that they had was outstanding. But I'm so proud of our team and the job that they did. San Diego had a great year, and uh, Bobby Ross, an uh, outstanding coaching job. Arnsberger, an outstanding coaching job. But today was our day. Is it easier to play a team that you played twice before? Well, like uh, it's never straight? easy against Buffalo. Are you kidding? <laughs> Thank you, Coach. And you can be certain we'll be seeing more of Dan Marino, Don Shula, and of course the Buffalo Bills here on Screen Sport. Indeed, the AFC Championship game is our game of the week next week. Read all about it in our special preview in the American Football Weekly Paper First Down and catch the action next Tuesday evening here on Screen Sport at 6.30. NFC, it's the Dallas Cowboys against the San Francisco 49ers from Candlestick Park. Can the 49ers make it to their fifth Super Bowl, or will the young Cowboys come of age? Find out in two weeks' time at 6.30 here on Screen Sport. But until next week, from me, Nick Halling, bye-bye for now.
NFL American Football is presented in association with Beefy 